New York Newsday, members only, and North Star Bank are providing this videotape as a public service. Hello, my name is Bob Johnson, and I'm publisher of New York Newsday. Perhaps the single biggest challenge facing our society today is the problem of illegal drugs in our children. What we as adults know, do, and say to our children about drugs can make a difference. We need to help them know that there are choices to be made. That's why Newsday, along with Members Only and North Star Bank, have joined together to bring you this video. Its purpose is to help you open a dialogue with your children about drugs by working together in our schools, in the home, and in the community, we will give our children the information they need to stay drug free. Yes, you can help your children beat drugs. Today's young people are being threatened by an enemy that they may not recognize, drugs. Education is one of the most important weapons that we have in our war against drugs. And that is why my company, Members Only, is supporting the efforts of New York Newsday and Newsday. We believe that by teaching young people of the terrible dangers of even casual drug use, we may prevent the unnecessary destruction of young lives. As president of North Star Bank, I am pleased to express our support for the Newsday and New York Newsday anti-drug campaign. At North Star Bank, the fight against drugs is a number one priority especially when it comes to protecting our children. Thanks to this campaign, our students are learning to say no to drugs, not once or twice, but forever. The purpose of this tape is to empower each of us in the fight against drugs. The issues raised are of importance to parents and the community. It is hoped that these segments will stimulate discussions and heighten awareness within parent and community groups, as well as within the family setting. The tape consists of 15 segments. After various groupings, suggested discussion topics appear on screen. Our host is Walter Cronkite. This videotape is a call for enlistment. We want you to join us in combating use of illegal drugs. Already drugs are taking a dreadful toll. Hundreds of thousands of people steal and mug every day to support the habit. Youngsters are ruined by crack before they have a real chance to live. Police and politicians are corrupted by rivers of dirty money. Addicts and their needles are the greatest danger in the AIDS plague. What's so incredible about this is that the drug problem is totally self-induced. No one asks to get cancer. No one asks for a heart attack. But drug use is totally voluntary. A lot of it may be because of ignorance. For instance, many parents, when they find that their children smoke marijuana, are grateful that it's not tobacco. But the truth is that marijuana today has a lot more cancer-causing ingredients than tobacco. And it's often the stepping stone to harder drugs like cocaine, and it's even more quickly addictive version, crack. And crack should terrify everyone. Over the last five years, cocaine-related emergency room treatments are up 300% and cocaine-related deaths are up 323%. And don't be misled by the thought that crack is an inner city or urban problem. It's in Kankakee and Pasadena and Norwalk. It has no geographic, ethnic, economic skew. It has no skew of any kind. Already, it's available to kids in the majority of our schools. And the first time a kid smokes crack, he has a 50% chance of becoming dependent upon it. And instantly, he becomes a prime candidate for a heart attack or stroke or epileptic type fit. That is to say that if a kid even tries crack, it might be all over for him. But people continue to use drugs because they believe that drugs will make them feel happy or popular or powerful. What they don't know is how quickly they can be hooked and how devastating it can be. We've simply got to tell them the truth. We're faced with a lot of misinformation, a lot of ignorance, but not stupidity. What we need to do is to change America's attitudes about drugs. 
People won't take drugs if they're persuaded that the costs outweigh the benefits. Once we change the attitudes, we can affect behavior. And that's the classic role of advertising. And so there was created the Media Advertising Partnership for a Drug-Free America. Representatives of the entire advertising industry, the people who create advertising, produce it, supply materials and talent for it, and the media have joined as partners dedicated to the proposition that not one more person should start using illegal drugs. To say that no use of any illegal drug is acceptable. Segment one, Glamorous World. While the popularity of cocaine has been on the rise over the last five years, so have some other things. Cocaine-related emergency room treatments, up 300%. Cocaine-related deaths, up 323%. And thousands of lives down the drain. Now, if for some reason you weren't aware of all this, welcome to the glamorous world of drugs. Segment two, circles. I do coke, uh, so I can work longer. So I can earn more. So I can do more coke. So I can work longer. So I can earn more. So I can do more coke. So I can work longer. So I can earn more. So I can do more. So I can work longer. Chasing rainbows. All too often we dismiss the problem of drug and alcohol abuse as belonging to someone else, somewhere else. The cycle of addiction is an equal opportunity destroyer, cutting across all ethnic, economic, professional, and geographic lines. Segment 3, Housewife. One out of every five people who try cocaine get hooked. But that's not your problem. <laughs> or is it? Segment four. Jesse Corte, English version. My name is Jesse Corte, and what I'm going to tell you is real. On January 4th, 1987, a passenger train en route between Washington and New York collided with a freight train. In the trial that followed, the engineer admitted to having smoked marijuana and overlooking security measures. They say that marijuana doesn't hurt anyone. But this time, 16 people died. Among them, Laura Corte. My wife. Segment 5. Jesse Corte, Spanish version. Mi nombre es Jesse Corte, y lo que les voy a contar es un caso real. El 4 de enero de 1987, un tren de pasajeros chocó con un tren de carga. En el juicio, el conductor admitió haber fumado marihuana y descuidado medidas de seguridad. Dicen que la marihuana no hace daño. Pero esta vez, 16 personas murieron. Entre ellas, Laura Corti, mi esposa. Every one of us can be an innocent victim of substance abuse. We all have a very real stake in the fight against drugs. You don't have to use drugs to be killed by them. Segment 6, Decisions. So, you finally got to wear your shoes the right way. You're picking out your own clothes. Your own music. You're going to the mall by yourself. And that haircut? That was your idea. You're making your own decisions. So don't blow this one. Don't smoke pot. Segment 7, Linda. Well, I started on, on pot about a year ago. 
But, uh, crack really messed me up bad, and, uh, I started on that, like, a month ago. And, you know, I, I just, I just wanted to see what it would, you know, be like. I said, nah, never to me, you know? I can handle it. We tried some, and, like, a month later, I couldn't live without it. I mean, I didn't think one time was gonna hurt me. I'm sorry what I put my family through. I never thought this could happen. Segment 8, Grow Up. When I grow up, I want to be a track star. No one ever says, I want to be a junkie when I grow up. I want to be a ballerina. Yet thousands of kids, like getting high, make a mess of their lives. I want to be a nurse. Don't let drugs get in the way of your dreams. Growing up is a tough job. Our children must make some difficult choices. As the adults in their lives, we must sensitize ourselves to the day-to-day -day pressures facing young people today and help them make the right decision now so that their dreams for the future do not become nightmares. Segment 9, Lab Rat. Only one drug is so addictive, 9 out of 10 laboratory rats will use it and use it and use it until dead. It's called cocaine, and it can do the same thing to you. Segment 10, Brain Waves. This is the brain activity of a normal 14-year-old. This is the brain activity of a 14-year-old after smoking marijuana. If you use pot, you're not using your brain. Drugs and alcohol have profound physical and psychological effects on the human body. Is what you know about drugs and alcohol myth or reality? Know the facts. What we don't know can hurt us and our children. Segment 11, Like Father. Is this yours? No, I'm... Mother said she found it in your closet. I don't know, one of the guys must... Must have what? Look, Dad, it's Where not did my... you get it? Dad, Answer I... me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. In today's world, the old adage, do as I say, not as I do, no longer works. Young people are great imitators and learn by example. We must closely re-examine our own attitudes and use of legal and illegal substances, including alcohol and nicotine. Segment 12, My Boy, English Version. My boy, he's a good boy. He helps around the house, he plays sports, and he promised me he's gonna try harder in school. He's a good boy, he stays out of trouble. Thank heaven he stays away from drugs. He's a good boy. Segment 13, My Boy, Spanish Version. Mi hijo es un buen chico. Me ayuda en la casa, hace deportes. Hey, Rod. 
y me prometió esforzarse más en la escuela. Es un buen chico, no se meta en líos. Y gracias a Dios, no toma drogas. Es un buen chico. We must be willing to commit ourselves to being aware of the signs and symptoms of drug abuse and recognize even the subtlest changes that might suggest possible drug and alcohol experimentation and abuse by the young people around us. More importantly, we must be willing to act on our suspicions and intervene. No one can afford to say, not my kid. Segment 14, Final Lesson. When she was six, after a few scrapes and tumbles, her dad taught her how to ride a two-wheeler. When she was nine, he helped her build a telescope that could see the moons of Jupiter. When she was 14, after a lot of giggling and giving up, her mom finally taught her how to hit a wicked two-handed backhand. All through her growing up, Susie's parents taught her well. But for all their love and attention, there was one lesson left untaught. Susie's parents never taught her about drugs. They never told her that drugs maim, drugs kill. So Susie learned one final lesson on her own. When you don't say no to your kids about drugs, it's the same as saying yes. Segment 15, Grave Words. Son, I figured when you were old enough, I'd talk to you about drugs. I tell you, they're nothing but poison. I tell you to stay away from the garbage that pushes that junk. Only I never figured that I ought to be telling that to a 13-year-old. If you don't teach your kids to say no to drugs, it's as good as saying yes. Children as young as five years old show a surprising awareness of illegal drugs. It is never too early to begin teaching children about drugs and alcohol and the effects and consequences of their abuse. Don't wait until it's too late. Now we need your help. We need you to join our partnership for a drug-free America. Play this tape everywhere people congregate, schools, places of worship, men's clubs, women's clubs, town meetings, everywhere. And then talk about it. Make your own plans to make any use of any illegal drug totally unacceptable. This is Walter Cronkite asking you to join the Partnership for a Drug-Free America. New York Newsday, members only, and North Star Bank have provided this videotape as a public service.